Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, I'm excited to be interviewing the lovely Francesca Moy. Now, Francesca Moy is known as the Meetup Queen. Francesca is a best-selling author, social media strategist, global business and mindset coach. And Francesca has gone from $120 a month in her business to over $1.5 million dollars serving a community of over 350 entrepreneurs who support and transform alongside one another. The results her clients experience inside the Mafia Academy Speak Volumes. It's not the normal Mafia. We'll talk about that. <laughs> don't, don't get a bit uh, stressed about that. Um, her proven strategies take business owners from a one-to-one business model, trading time for money, into a profitable and scalable business online and offline. Not only that, Francesca is impacting the world globally with her virtual assistant program, matching time poor business owners, gee, aren't we all time poor, with social media superstars trained in these exact strategies. Francesca is the perfect example of how a mindset can transform your business, continuing growing to serve her clients at the highest level so they too can grow. Welcome, Francesca. Thank you, JJ. Thank you so much for having me. This sounds like it's going to be lots of fun. Oh, it is. It is. It's definitely going to be full on energy. I can already tell that. <laughs> well, you're, you're Italian and my family, I love to cook. And I, one of my favourite things that I love to cook is Italian. Oh. And so I, uh, we, we joke around my household that I'm the nonna. Uh. And I say to my son, when he has kids, that his kids have to call me nonna. And my, oh. my son's saying, you're not Italian, mum. They can't call you nonna. <laughs> Why not? Yes, you can, for sure. You claim it. <laughs> I'm claiming it, that's for sure. <laughs> So welcome, uh, welcome, Francesca. I'm really thrilled. I've been to your events a few years ago. I went to one of your events and I've got two books up here. Yes. I'll just, uh, I'll just show you for the camera. So this one, Bums on Seats, I bought, which is fantastic, uh, with uh, the wonderful uh, Natasha. Yeah, Natasha Demon. Yes. And then also follow me. I've got both of them. So, um, yeah, so I loved your events. So, so tell me. Where did where did the where did the title Meetup Queen come from? Well, a lot of people think I'm a dating coach, and I'm like, if you know anything about me, I'm single. Definitely not good at dating. <laughs> <laughs> so the Meetup Queen started. It was actually very organic. I was running Meetup events. I was going to a lot of meetups, and I started to receive this comment from people going, "Oh my gosh, you're everywhere on Meetup. You're the Meetup Queen." And I was like. Mm, okay one person said it two people said eventually after like five or six people i'm like okay i'm gonna claim it this is it <laughs> i am the meetup queen people and to be honest jj it's sort of I've grown out of that phase of meetup as such but it sort of stick with me like people still call me that so i'm like oh well i'm i'm, I'm gonna have it i don't mind uh being the meetup queen that's totally fine <laughs> well you're good at you're good at uh bringing people together yeah aren't you and that's why you're so great as a coach and and getting you know groups of people together uh, and business owners going from one to one to one to many because you're yes. great bringing those people together and networking and all that sort of stuff and that's that's how I know you as well and it's so true and I'm actually like literally today I was walking my beautiful Ollie boy uh the dog and and I was like you know what maybe I should start another networking event. And I was like fantasizing, like what would I call it and what would it look like and where would I do it? And I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe this is my next thing. So, and where are you based now? In Bulimba in Brisbane. Oh, you're in Brisbane now. Were you yeah. always in Brisbane or were you in Melbourne? No, I was always in Brisbane, but Natasha's from Melbourne, so I was travelling to Melbourne a lot. Ah, oh, that's why I thought you were in Melbourne, yeah, because, uh, yes. yeah, Natasha's in, in Melbourne. So, so tell me about your story. So where did you, because I heard a little bit about your story when I was at your event and I loved it. Yeah. So tell, tell the listeners a little bit about you. Well, I am a normal human being people think I'm a, I'm a unicorn and I'm like no I'm not 
I'm a normal human being and I used to um, work in normal jobs and I used to work in a um, reception at hotels and I used to love it because I used to make like people's holidays, right? Like, oh, let me let me look after you. And I love that. I love people yeah. and I love making the, the holiday special. And I never ever in a million years thought I was going to be a, a coach or, or a business owner at all. And um, it's been fascinating because when I, you know, I grew up in a family where my brother is a genius at music and I was the one that never had anything special going on. <laughs> and yeah. I thought I was a bit stupid and I wasn't smart enough and all those things went going on in my brain. And, you know, it's just like, eventually I was like, maybe there is more to life than just like hide and, and be an excuse maker and not achieve anything. Maybe I, maybe I need to try something new. So I left, I left Italy. I grew up in Italy and I left Italy and I, I went to live in London and then Spain and then Greece. And I kept traveling around until I realized that maybe I needed to stop running away. And um, I thought I'd go one more thing. I go to Australia and then I come back. And I find that, you know, Italian husband and that they will cheat on me. <laughs> all, of, all of that will happen. And, and when I got here, I met someone and we fell in love. And that's when, you know, I thought, okay, this is it. I met the one. I'm going to be married and I'm going to be a housewife. And this is what I was going to do. And then it didn't, it didn't work out. One day I woke up and I realized that I was just pretending to be happy. He was pretending to be happy. We actually wanted completely different things out of life. And yes. so I made one of the tougher decisions at the time and I broke up. And so I left and I went back to Italy and then I realized, oh, I don't know if I can live in Italy anymore. This is, I don't belong here. And yes. so this has been the thing for me, JJ, my whole life is like, where do I belong? I yes. grew up in, in a different city from where I was born. So I never really felt I belonged anywhere. It's, it's been a journey to come home to me. That's where I belong. Um, yes. And it's been really interesting. So, yeah, I decided to come to Australia and then I decided to come back to Australia. And that's when I started my uh, life coaching journey and I became a life coach and I made $120 in the first nine months of my business. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, true story, right? 120 bucks. And then I was like, shoot, now I better, I got to go back, go back to a job. I don't have any money left. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. And then I thought I'd give it one more shot and I created the meetup group and I created a Facebook group and I started to post on social media and boom, everything exploded from there. And um, yeah, the rest from there is history, right? Then I started to run meetups and teach people how to run meetups. And then I started the Amafia Academy, uh, which stands for Meetup and Facebook International Academy. And I learn, I learn every step of the way. I, I just kept moving forward blindfolded pretty much and uh, figure out along the way yeah what made you decide to keep moving forward because what mm. I'm a coach and I love working with coaches and I love you know there's so many amazing coaches out there and it breaks my heart Francesca when I see them uh, stop doing what they, they're doing and stop helping people because they hit a brick wall you know and I think I don't think anyone's immune from hitting a brick wall when they start out in business because it's, you know, it's bound to happen. It's a learning. Like you've never, if you've never done it before, you don't know, you know, so you don't know what you don't know. So there's always going to be a brick wall that you hit at some stage. What kept you going? Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, the brick walls never stop. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the thing that people don't understand, right? They're like, Oh, once I get to the million dollar business, this is it. No brick walls. No, the brick walls are going to get even thicker and bigger and yes. more scarier, right? It's going to be, even it's going to be multiplied by, by million. I was saying that to a client the other day. She's like, I was like, you're doing great. She's like, no, really, I'm not where you're at yet. I want to get there. And I said, for what? She goes, I just wanted to say that I'm a million dollar business. And I'm like, so what? So you can have a million dollar problems? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Is that just an ego thing or do you want to do it because is there a reason behind it? Because like, I did it for ego at the first time. So answering your question, I wanted to prove my, my dad wrong. Yeah. I wanted to prove that I was worth it. I, was to, I wanted to prove that I could make it. I wanted to prove that I didn't know, needed to go back and to get a job. So sometimes people say when they meet me now, they're like, 
oh, you're different. You should be used to be very egoic and very like full of yourself. And now you're sort of more spiritual, more different. I'm like, I had to go through that to, yes. to get here, right? I had to leverage on my ego to go like, no, nah, this is going to stop me. It was very masculine. It was very um, driven. And I had to leverage on that to be able to to go ahead. I didn't know any better. Now in hindsight, I know other things, but you know, I didn't know at the time. So I had to do what I knew, which is just keep pushing, just keep pushing. So I fall, stand back up, fall, stand back up. That's, it was so strong in me, the need to be accepted by my dad. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, so with, with being accepted by your dad, do you feel accepted now? Or do you feel that you were always accepted, but you just didn't feel that? Yeah, that's a very good point today. Look, to be honest, my dad is an amazing character and yes. dad is always accepting me in non-accepting me. Yes. <laughs> so dad has always been very tough and yes. he still is. And um, is now, I have I have proven to him, which is good to know. Um, and sometimes I'm thinking, dad, now you're biased. Like it was, it was nicer when you were not so that you would give <laughs> tough time like you know so then I would think harder and make things happen like now it's just all too easy like you just trust everything I do I don't like that yeah. <laughs> fascinating right so um my dad and I always had a bit of an interesting relationship we don't agree in a lot of things and we still yeah. don't um but uh, my dad always accepted me in non-accepting me that's the best way I can explain yeah. it so <laughs> I, I challenge him I always have and I always will <laughs> I'm sure he challenges you too <laughs> yes, oh, definitely. So, so what have been your biggest lessons in business? Oh, do we? How long? How much do we have? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to sit here for like a, a year? I can, I can tell you all the stories. Look, um, there's been so many. There's been so many. I believe the business is a spiritual journey. So, if you're not willing to see the true self, don't get in business because. Yeah. It will come out, right? It will come out out of, it's impossible to hide in business. It's it's just not going to happen. So even if I was hiding in the beginning, I was running the business by ego. Uh, I had to eventually face myself and, and, and be honest with myself and find the truth. So my biggest, um, oh, geez, what was the question? <laughs> Your biggest lessons in business. <laughs> biggest lesson. Oh my goodness. I'm like, where are you now? Yeah. <laughs> my biggest lesson would be um learning how to really like, oh Jesus, so many lessons, really hard one. Probably learning how to be accepted, like accept myself first and foremost, because I was always trying to um be liked by others by you know, like clients didn't like something, oh, let me change it, let me please you. I was such a people pleaser that yeah. I was actually doing a disservice to a lot of people. So my biggest lesson is to don't do things for others, do things for what you believe is best. Yeah. Um, I think that that was, is probably one of the biggest lesson. But to be honest, JJ, there's so many, right? There's so many yeah. lessons that every step of the way, even like the other day I had a lesson, like just every day, I get I get a lesson and I learn and I always wonder like what is right and what is wrong and I don't believe in that question in like universal and right or wrong I just believe like what is right for me in this moment and maybe it's wrong tomorrow right I, I'm okay to make decisions today that tomorrow I might not agree with but today I fully believe that and so I'm not gonna make that decision yeah, 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 and I love I love you talking about because um, I can I can see myself in you when you were talking about being, you know, wanting to be liked and being the people pleaser. And I think that in business, the more you stand stand out, the more you put yourself out there, mm -hmm. and the bigger your tribe gets. You have to, and and you're running events, which you run events. Um, you know, you, there are people that are just not a match for you. And I remember when I first started my big events and I do free events, I had to psychologically, Francesca, I had to psych psychologically put in my head and say, okay, well, at lunch break, some will not turn, come back, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's a free event. And so yeah. people, you know, there's no commitment for them. So I had to get my, my brain right to go, okay, it's okay because they're the people that aren't my tribe, they're not right. a match. And that's a good thing because they're the people that are actually hard to work with 
because you're not suited for each other. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying, and this is what one of the biggest thing is when uh, I've learned so much in, in the last seven years is like I used to make people do things. I'm like, I'm a coach. I'm a different coach from a people. I'm going to make you be successful. I'm going to make you do things that you don't want to do. And then I found that that was also not the right way to do it because yeah. you don't, you can't make someone do something like you got to show them, teach them, but you got to let go and let them go through their path. And sometimes that path means hating on you <laughs> because yeah. you show them parts of them that they don't want, they're not ready to see. And so the other thing that I had to learn is like, I'm, am I okay being hated? Cause yeah. I've got haters. Oh boy. Yeah. I've got lots of them and it's part of the journey. And I think that at the beginning, a lot of business owners don't move forward in the business because they're afraid of the haters. They just want to yeah. stay in the liking zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think, you know, if you don't stand for, for, you know, if you don't stand up for anything, then you're not being a true authentic self. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, once you, when you were saying about your journey in business and how you've changed and uh, I've, I felt that as well with myself and it's, it's, to me it's like being more authentic it's like okay this is who I really am like warts and all here I am look I agree with that JJ and who I used to be it was also who I was back then yeah right so I love it when people say to me Francesca you're so much more authentic now I'm like well I think I was authentic then I was who I was then and I'm, I'm a develop I'm, I'm evolving as a human being and that's the new version of me and that maybe you resonate with more with this part. That's why you feel that this is more authentic. But that part was definitely authentic. She, that Francesca didn't give a shit about anybody. She would just go for it, right? She wanted success yeah. and she just went for it. Doesn't mean that she was, I, I was authentic with that version of who I was. And then yeah. I found the, a new version of me and, and this is the new authentic. So I, 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 I love that because when people tell me you're more authentic now, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. I think that was always authentic with where, I used to be. I wasn't liked maybe as much. <laughs> yeah. Right. But but that is the journey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. How have you How have you uh, gone through COVID? So there's been you know the last couple of years has been so challenging. How have you gone through that process with your business and with your tribe? Yeah, that's a very good question. And to be honest, have I gone through it? I don't know. Is it over yet? Yeah. <laughs> are, are we there <laughs> yet? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I honestly, I think that was one of the biggest roadblock because I was living in La La Land. I was like, I've I made it. Business, it's easy now. We know what we're doing. I yeah. was tired. I was working very hard. So I was looking for a way out of working that hard. I was looking for a new model of business anyway, but um, because I had it so easy, I didn't really, I wasn't really focusing on trying to change it. So I do feel that COVID happened for me because it made me find other ways to to do business rather than doing it the way that I was doing it. So if yeah. for for your audience, if they don't know, I used to run national tours. I used to, I used to do only face-to-face -face events. My business was face-to-face. -face. Yeah. So, COVID coming, like you can't do events. I'm like, no, what, what? No, 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 no. I do events all the time. Like you can't yeah. say that. <laughs> so it was scary. It was terrifying. And I'm, to be honest, I'm very proud of how I was able to pivot. So the, because it, obviously I had, I had volume, I had over like 200 people in my academy when COVID hit, right? So I had lots of people in it. So that took me a couple of years to sort of, make it smaller and smaller right because obviously people were on payment plans were committed for 12 months right some people are renewed for a second year so the first probably in 2019 2020 i didn't feel that much difference because i had so many people already in my community i created new programs i created new courses so all of that was working well so i had to reinvent what i was doing but it was all within the community that i already had what happened is that 20 20, so that's 2019, 2020, 2021 was still good. The end of 2021 and 2022 has been the hardest part ever. Yeah. This, this financial, this, this, this has been the hardest part because now you are, for two years, you haven't been, I haven't been face to face with people. So I'm sort of like, I had to reinvent everything, go online, but online we don't we can't do as many events right before i could do events in every city and do eight events in a, in eight weeks now you can do one event a month so it's sort of like it changes numbers it changes the the the, the business um yeah. 
lots more people gone online so there's more a more perspective so it has changed and um i found myself hanging on to dear life like i don't want this to change <laughs> everybody give me back my business i was i got through anger i think i got through the whole like you know the, the grief process right to let go of the business as it was and i started to look at what else i can do so we have launched successfully a agency so we do a virtual assistant agency now and um we find and train virtual assistant for businesses that don't necessarily need my academy but they just need help in the business yeah um, so the jj i think that now the agency is probably the main uh, part of the business the main income uh, and the academy is becoming more my fun project yeah, brilliant. And I, I, again, I resonate with you not wanting to because you're a real people's person and so am I. And I actually, and I don't know if you felt like this, Francesca, I was like, I can't do this online. Like I really resisted it because I'm a huggy person, you know, you get into the room and, you know, there's so much excitement uh, yeah in the room and you know you hug and you see and um you know I teach part of my business is teaching public speaking training and so I'm like I can't do that online that's it, you know it's impossible and so I was like resisting 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 um and just like you and then I started to go okay well I'm gonna have to do it online <laughs> um and then and then I actually started loving it as well mm-hmm. And I'm thinking parts of my business, particularly there's some parts in my business that I'm thinking, why did I not do this sooner? Mm. It's fascinating when we are faced with reality and there's no other way around it. We have to do things in a different way. And at the end we go, oh, actually, this is not that bad. And so even my clients were like, no, we're not doing the three-day workshop online. We're not coming. We're going to wait until COVID finishes. I'm like, you could wait forever. We don't know when this is finished. So we're moving online. You do whatever you want. And then they came along and they're like, oh, wait, this is actually good. I don't have to pay for flights, accommodation. I can just have Francesca in my house. This is actually work out for me. Yeah. now, I don't know you, but now it's the opposite. We're struggling to get those people to actually show up in a face-to-face event. So yes. I did a conference in February and I had to do a split half face to face and half on Zoom because people were not willing to travel. Yeah. It's just a, it's a whole new culture change, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Different world. And if we don't adapt quickly, the business is going to die, right? So yeah. very important. We've got to be adaptable in business. And I, for a second there, maybe more than a second, I wasn't. Me I was like, no, <laughs> I'm hanging on to this. I even like did, don't tell anybody, but I even did. <laughs> yeah, I think some people might listen, but anyway, tell me. <laughs> I even did like my last event was literally like a borderline with like, you know, okay, this is your last event. You can't do any more events. It's like, are you really allowed to do events? And I'm like, why not? <laughs> and nobody, nobody told me that I can't. Like, it's all over social media and the news. I'm like, I don't watch news. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I was just so oblivious. I did not want to hear it. I'm like, no, I'm yeah. doing events. And so I remember still my last event, I think it was mid-March. There was literally like borderline to like, okay, you can't do any more events. And that was it. And for two years, I didn't do a face-to-face event. I was like, no. I was still doing events, though. Actually, I'm, I'm lying. I used to do events still, even for two or three people. I'm like, I don't care. I'm still doing them. I was so stubborn. I didn't want to let them go. <laughs> I did it the first whole first year. So yeah. in and out, in and out. Like I, I'm a, you know, I'm a bit of a risk taker as well. So I'm like, I'm, and I'm thinking, no one else, hardly anyone else is doing. <laughs> Yeah, but any pocket that I could do it, I just throw yeah. it in advance. So I did that for the first twelve months, mm. um, and then it just once it got to the stage where, um, you know, and I've got really strong values around who can come into my room and who can't. And so for me, everyone can come into my room. And so yeah. when there's that border of hey, you know, yeah. there's that discrimination that I felt. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Like, you know, everyone's welcome in my room. And so that's when I started to go, no, I'm going to have to go online so that everyone, so I don't have to, and I would start, you know, say people couldn't come into my room. So, yeah. And the other thing, it was like a bit devastating for me. Like I did an event in February and then we left the event. Everybody was so happy. Everybody was so in love. And then everybody had COVID. 
Oh, no. And then I felt, no, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that again. I don't know if I can bring that to, you know, like be responsible for for that. And I mean, I'm not going to, we're not going to start to talk about what's happening in the world, but, you know, it's sort of affecting as business owners. Like pe- my clients were coming to me going, what do I do? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. How can I tell you what to do? I have no idea what we're going to do. So yeah. um, it was it was definitely challenging. I, I'm not going to lie. I do believe it was, it was for my best because I've discovered a part of the business that probably I would have always pushed it back. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Oh, I don't know. So I think that that's quite a blessing at the end of yeah. the day. Yeah, same. And you talked about your change in regards to spirituality. What does mm-hmm. that look like for you? Well, I do believe that business has is, is been my, bis- my biggest mentor. My, my own business has been my biggest mentor because I had to face um, lots of different things that um, I often didn't want to go through. Like one time I got taken to court and I was like, not doing that. Here, take the money back. I don't want to go to court. And yeah. I was like, what if? what if there's a lesson there? What if there's a lesson for me? What if there's a lesson for the other person? And so I went through court and I won and that gave me that feeling of going, you know, that little brain that tells us you're doing something wrong. Like you, you know, you're not allowed to do this or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing anything wrong. Like I'm, I'm teaching a course and if people are not willing to take the steps, then it's not my fault. And I need to release that responsibility so all of those things were my biggest teacher of i always a believer that everything happened for a reason so instead of running away from it i need to face it and that was one of one of the example right that um there was a lot of embarrassment or going to someone take you to court like you must be a bad person and i'm like you know what i'm gonna share it because sometimes people don't realize that and nowadays we're so afraid of the cl- the customer right we're so afraid of you know they're gonna take us to court they're gonna put a bread review they're gonna do this and I'm like, do it. Put a bad review. That is totally fine. At least it looks like it's authentic. If I have only positive reviews, it looks like I'll be fake, right? So it's like, yeah. go for it. Like, hate me and do whatever you need to do. I know that I will be, as, as if you're willing, I could be a, a learning process in, in your journey as much as you are for me because obviously the, we're a reflection of each other. And so for me, um, the spirituality came from studying and doing lots of courses and, and keep digging in, in who am I and how am I showing up into, into this business and why do I do things and why do I make decisions this way? And, and you know, people look up to, to us, right? We're coaches, yeah. we're leaders. So I, I, need, I have, for me, a duty of becoming the best version of myself. Um, and so at one point I found out that I was lying. I was lying to myself and I was lying to others because I didn't want to look perfect. I was like, no, 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 look, I am not that good. Do you see how I am overweight? So one point in my life, I was about 22 kilos overweight. And I did it subconsciously because I didn't want people to think that I was perfect. I'm like, no, look, I'm good in business, but I'm not consistent in my eating. I'm not consistent in exercising. And that's why I'm overweight. And so I was like, wait, 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 wait. You walk your talk, woman. You tell people that they gotta be consistent in business. You gotta be consistent in in food. And yeah. so I started a process, and I lost twenty two kilos. Wow! Um, without even knowing that I could lose twenty kilos. At the moment, I actually put them put on back about six, and I'm like, no. So now I'm back to going. No, this is another excuse. Like I I know that I can maintain it. I've maintained it for two years during COVID. Definitely, I can maintain it now. So yeah. it, it's another process of going where else can i stretch myself if i if i'm teaching clients that they have to stretch themselves i need to find places in my life that i gotta do that to be the example and also to to become the better version of myself if i am here as a leader i need to walk my talk in every area of my life so yeah so that's what i i think the spirituality looks like for me is walking my talk and 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 looking at the truth of what i the person that i am yeah i love your story about the court because I think that there are times that we've got to hold our ground as well and as a coach I think it's so easy for you know one of the big watch outs I have Francesca is if someone comes to one of my events and they say to me I've been you know I've seen Tony Robbins and didn't get much out of him I've been to Kerwin Ray didn't get much out of him and they blame everyone else they don't come to me 
their results. And I think this industry, because I know how great you are, Francesca, and I know how great, you know, some other coaches are that I've worked with. And to, I can actually look at every training that I've gone to as a participant and I've always got something out of it. Always. There's probably one speaker that I saw years ago who um, I didn't align with at all, but I still got stuff out of um, going yeah. to the event. Uh, but I think... Yeah, at least you learn what not to do, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, and so, but I think it's so important. And one of the things through COVID that I learned was that you had to take a stand. And um, I don't know how, you know, when COVID hit, and people started to freak out. And I know for myself, I had to really stand my ground because I had people at some point, I think it was like one week, ringing up and saying, can I cancel? I need my money back. And, you know, and they're, they're wanting their money because they're scared of what's going to happen with COVID. And I had to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I had to stand my ground because if I did that with everyone in my business, I wouldn't have a business anymore. So I wouldn't be able to help anyone anymore. Um, so I think there's that balance of, yeah, learning. And definitely for me, I had to do that over COVID and actually really stand my ground. Um, yeah. And th th there's one question I always ask myself when I make decisions like that. And it's, is it good for me? Is it good for others? Is it good for the greater good? Mm -hmm. And that really helps me decide whether I'm doing the right thing. Mm. And and that I went through that process because I thought if I give it, if, if I start making these decisions, then I'm not going to be able to help anybody. Mm. And that's not going to be good. And this is the thing is as people pleasers, for me, was the hardest thing. So as soon as COVID hit, I had a retreat in Italy booked and I had about seven people that already paid and I already paid for the accommodation. It was over $25,000 of accommodation in, in, Austria, in Italy, I paid in full, I was done, yeah. I was ready to go, and then COVID hit. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm like emailing them going, what's going to happen? Can you move it to six months? So I said to my clients, no refunds, we're going in six months time. Six months time, yes, you know, it wasn't happening. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, move it for another six months. And yeah. then I'm like, hey, if it doesn't happen in six months, I might need a, a refund because what am I going to do? And they yeah. said, we don't give a refund. I'm like, but my clients are starting to ask me for refunds. I'm yeah. like, what do I do? So I started to get those those clients put themselves together and they were like, we want a refund, we want a refund. And it was so loud and it was so echoing that I just went, oh my gosh, I don't know. Okay, here. And I just refunded everybody without having the refund of the actual venue, right? So I still had was $25,000 in loss and I had to refund all these people. And as you know, we charge more than what we pay there. So I'm like, I'm out of pocket here, people. What am I going to do? And it was, yeah. it was, it was terrifying. It took me another probably 18 months after that to get my money back and I didn't get all of it. So yeah. that was another lesson of going, listen, if they went to a bigger, a bigger, um, you know, company, yeah. they wouldn't have been abusing them and, and calling them and calling them names because they're not giving around. It is what it is, right? COVID is hitting yeah. all of us. And so I was like, that was what made me decide no, sometimes being generous is is not going to be good for the business. And and I need to make a decision for the business, not just because I like some people or want to please them or whatever that is. So it's, it, honestly, I think that the COVID really helped us face with our own insecurities and the things that we were not facing to look at because it's easier just to find someone and keep them quiet than you know, then go through the things. So like, no, actually, it's our policy. We have no refund policy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. What would you say to business owners that are finding it challenging right now? What would be your top tips for them? Um, so I believe that finding something challenging is a choice. So I believe that we can, we can work on our mindset and our brain and our thoughts to be able to change the way we perceive what is happening. So yes. every challenge if we want to still call it challenge is an opportunity for us to see what's working what's not working and then how to tweak it and a lot of the time um jj people are not they jump to conclusion too fast right i've been doing this for three minutes and it's not working and i just go well try to go on a diet for five minutes it's not gonna work you can <laughs> yeah. go through probably like two weeks three weeks three weeks that you get no results and your brain is going to tell you what's the point is might just might as well eat right so yeah. it's about that keeping that brain consistently on the 
the, what you want on that goal. And no matter what happens, just still keep going, keep walking, keep, keep being consistent. So one of my biggest thing is consistency and discipline. So being disciplined and take action, but real action, not action of working behind the computer for the next eight hours for the next, you know, uh, 20 days and not showing up on social media, not to go into networking events, not to, you know, go and seek for clients you got you got to put yourself in front of people to be able to get clients so um yeah. my biggest my biggest suggestion is consistency discipline and work on their mindset those are the three things that i don't think anybody can survive in business without those three things yeah absolutely absolutely and so and how can people get in contact with you how can they follow you you're on insta i mean you're the the meetup queen you're everywhere aren't you <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, you can join me, of, of course, on Instagram, Francesca Moy, and on my personal uh, profile on Facebook. I'll, I'm quite active on there. Uh, I do have a Facebook group as well um, that you can join. It's called um, Workshop Secret for Coaches, and we do a lot of training in there for free, so uh, we can do that. We are about to start a new uh, Facebook group for our new uh, business, which is the, the um, virtual assistant agency, so that will be another thing that will come up. But for now, I'll say those are the things that you can find me. I've got a post podcast that is quite um cool as well with it's called right. business yeah business behind the scene it's on apple on spotify whatever you listen to it you should find it and um yeah those are the things the, the places and you know when it when it's meant to be we'll we'll, we'll we'll meet anyway i know i believe that yeah beautiful beautiful well we've got thank you so much for your beautiful insights and now we've got some fun questions for you and yes. you've got one for me. I do. <laughs> which, is, which is exciting. All right. So I call them the 10 speed fun questions. So okay. are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So the first one is, the first one's easy. What's your favourite book that you've read? Oh, how oh, that's easy. That's so difficult because I got so many. Okay. Probably my favourite book would be The Queen's Code. The ah. Queen's Code of um, Armstrong, um, Alison Armstrong. Oh, so good. I think every woman should read that book. Okay, I'm just going to write that down. I haven't, um, haven't read Queen, that one. The Queen's Code. So what do we do? One question each or are you going to shoot your turn? Yeah, I'm going to shoot them all to you. Okay, go. Uh, what, what, what hidden talent have you got? Hidden talent? Uh, then salsa. Oh, I love okay. dancing. I can see you doing the salsa. Uh, most interesting celebrity you have met and why were they interesting? Celebrity, probably Tony Robbins. Yeah. Tony Robbins. And uh, is my idol, is is everything I ever dream of. I think it is the reason why I'm a single. <laughs> it put the stands up way too high. <laughs> and I remember you, those of you that, 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 that are listening, how you got to meet him backstage. I remember yes. that and seeing that whole... Um, process yeah. by selling his ticket so you find yeah. a way girl you find always a way. always be resourceful right if you want to get something yeah. um who would play you in a movie who i would play in a movie or would, who, who would, would play, play you in the movie because you're the star who would play you in the movie oh geez how do you answer that question um um monica bellucci is an italian an italian um yeah she's so amazing Beautiful. I was thinking of, is it Sophie Longora? Sophie Lo Lauren? Yeah, nice. No, oh, yeah, oh, Sophie Lo Lauren. Yeah, her too. <laughs> um, okay, uh, if you were asked to cook a dish, what would you cook and why? Okay, so depends if I um I am me now. So for three months, in the last three months, I've been very naughty. Um, so I would say like lasagna or pizza. <laughs> <laughs> all those things but that's why i'm six kilos over right <laughs> yeah do you love to cook i do love to cook yeah, yeah. um who has been one of your biggest mentors um tony robbins yeah tony robbins is definitely definitely my biggest mentor yeah yeah do, do you love his book awaken the giant within I've never read it. Oh my gosh. That's if, if someone asks me what my favorite book is, that's it. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, right. Uh, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Oh my gosh. I am not someone that eats 
things um, that I don't know. This is my biggest secret. Nobody knows. I'm very fussy eater. So if I don't know how what it would be like, I wouldn't eat it. So I don't know how to answer that question because I don't think I never ate anything that I wouldn't, that is, looks dodgy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your favorite place? Where's your favorite place to travel? <laughs> um, Bali. 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 Um, have you got a word? Some people have a word for each year. Have you got a word for 2022? And if you haven't, what word would you have? You know what? This is hilarious. I do have a word and I probably forgot it now, but every year we choose the word for the year after. Uh, and I don't know, it's June. So I'm like, I probably forgot this word. But I think that it was um, restructuring. Yeah, great. It would be. And what legacy do you want to leave? <clears throat> I want people to know that they can do anything they want. It's possible. Success is possible to every single one of us. There's no one special more than others. We, every single one of us can do that. So my legacy is to really allow people to get out of the way nine to five and just believe that they can do whatever they want. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. Thank you. All, All right. right. I've got mine. Hey, you're my turn. Ooh. All right. You ready? I'm always nervous when I get my 10 questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you asked for it. I know. I do ask for it. Well, I, do, uh, I like to li live with uncertainty. <laughs> um, if you were an animal, which one would you be? Oh, and this is going to sound funny. <laughs> Not weight-wise, but an elephant. <laughs> Why? I just think they're so majestic. I think I love elephants. And I also love, if I had two, it would be an elephant or a dolphin because I love dolphins. Dolphins, I love dolphins too. Okay, good. Um, if you can be anything for today, what it would be? If I could be anything for today, for for, for one day. Oh, if I can be anything for one day, I'd like be for anyone. Yeah, I'd be a I'd be a fly, and I just fly around <laughs> and listening to all these different people, and I'd fly around the world. You know, being Tony Robbins' house, just oh. <laughs> Oh, you just got me there. I will love that too then. <laughs> um, okay, describe yourself with one word. Passionate. I like that. Um, who's your favourite cartoon character? Ah, uh, Tweety Bird. <laughs> oh, cute. Uh, what's your favourite childhood play? Childhood play? Hmm. I don't know a childhood play. Um, or cartoon? A cartoon. Yeah. Would be, I'd say Tweety Bird again. Yeah, same. Okay. Um, did the tooth fairy ever give you money for every tooth you lose? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get much money. <laughs> okay. But you got some. That's good. I got none. Yeah. What's your favorite type of holiday? Tropical, near the beach. Okay. Um, which Disney princess can you relate to? Uh oh probably uh I say Cinderella, I don't know why. Oh cute. Um have you watched Disney's Encanto? No. <laughs> oh, so you don't want to talk about Bruno? I don't know Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno. There, there is a song that goes we don't talk about Bruno. Oh. <laughs> No, I don't want to talk about Bruno. Okay, then that's not, it's not funny. But probably if you guys are watching this and you, you watch Encanto, that probably was a funny question. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> was that 10? That was 10. Oh, easy. I got off the hook. Sure. Sometimes I get hard questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Francesca. And what's your podcast called again? Because I'm going to get onto it. Yeah, Business Behind the Scene. Business behind the scene. Yeah, let me know which one is your favorite episode. I always love to ask that question. Yeah, awesome. Fantastic. Well, I'll start listening to that as well. Thank you so much, Francesca. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure uh, interviewing you and learning about you. And I know that uh, the listeners will have a lot of value from listening to your advice and uh, your story, which is so inspirational. So thank you so much. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, and, and hopefully I'll, I'll have you on the show again. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. See ya. Ciao.